Madam President. It's a great honor to talk with you. I've been to Kyrgyzstan a number of times, and it's always, uh, a very, it's always been a very rewarding experience. So it's a great opportunity to have this conversation with you. Thank you. I wanted to ask you, first of all, um, there aren't many of us who have taken part in revolutions. And you've actually paid, played a key role in two revolutions. I wonder if you could tell us a little bit about that experience and what, what you've learned from it as a politician. Uh, revolution probably is uh, too loud and too high what you said. Uh, that was uh, really a uprising of people against authoritarianism and against, uh, uh, against what uh, uh, people don't want uh, to continue of, uh, to live in. And uh, uh, 14 years took for uh, President Akhaev uh, uh, to, uh, to make uh, the country as the field uh, of um, uh, the activity of his uh, family and clan, his uh, children, his uh, in-laws, everyone was in the politics. And uh, we've been uh, uh, just uh, watching uh, what piece of uh, uh, industry, economy was uh, taken by them. And, uh, so uh, corruption flourished. Uh, uh, people started uh, to... Uh, leave the country more and more. And um, it took place in 2005, what was uh, called uh, um, later on as Tulip Revolution, after the Rose Revolution in uh, the Belize. Uh, um, when Bakiev came to the power, all of us, we thought that uh, at last now we'll start uh, a new life and uh, uh, people benefit uh, from that, uh, but uh, it was not the case. And uh, what Akhaev's done in 14 years, uh, Bakis want to do in uh, five years. <laughs> and uh, they started to enrich themselves uh, very aggressively. And when a piece of uh, uh, law came uh, to the parliament that uh, the uh, uh, Bakif will, uh, if he's capacitated to work further as president, then someone, the third person, will come to the power. And it was clear that this would be his son. And his son was uh, uh, just the head of one of uh, such a new institution for investment. Uh, but meantime, the prime minister was coming to report to him. That was too much. It was really too much. And uh, uh, from, uh, the uh, horrible also in, uh, uh, in uh, the power. Uh, his chief of staff was killed uh, and burned down and uh, a lot of other cruel things uh, uh, took place. Uh, journalists been beaten to the death and uh, uh, free press, uh, of, um, which we've been uh, very proud of, uh, it, it, uh, it was uh, tarnishing. So, I mean, many things which we've been uh, very much unhappy with. And uh, I was a leader of opposition in the parliament. Uh, uh, that was a tiny group, uh, 11 people in the parliament uh, against uh, 72, quite a loud uh, group. And uh, they would uh, do everything by instruction from the White House. So we've, uh, we started, uh, of course, uh, to activate um, uh, all our um, such uh, uh, we started to be active and so we started to build uh, uh, the line against this uh, yeah. of, um, uh, system and uh, um, seven of um, uh, uh, seven of uh, April it took place uh, 2010. 6th of April, all the leaders been arrested and uh, uh, people have been unhappy with all this, uh, very uh, uh, angry with this arrest. They came to the square of the White House, but they've been uh, meet with the shots from the windows of the White House. So 
we paid very high price. 87 people died in front of the White House. Uh, and um, unfortunately, it seems to me that uh, later on uh, in uh, Libya, in, uh, uh, in Tunisia, uh, the world was uh, very active. Uh, they, they gave a very active reaction, whereas in Kyrgyzstan it was uh, sort of unnoticed almost. Uh, so, uh, but uh, uh, everyone has realized that uh, it's a new trend, a new such a, a wave is coming up. And uh, um, the night, 7 April to 8, uh, we... Uh, uh, have demanded the resignation of the government of Bakif, and it collapsed straight. And we took the power from the floor, uh, this uh, floor which was full of blood in front of the White House. And so we took the uh, of, uh, power, and we promised that uh, in uh, uh, half a year we'll conduct parliamentary elections. In uh, um, uh, uh, this uh, October 10 will conduct uh, presidential elections. And we, we moved the country over to the parliamentarism. It was a decision which we taken uh, 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 just in advance of this uh, event. So we thought that uh, uh, authoritarianism is enough. Enough is enough because two presidents uh, ran away from the country. And uh, uh, we have drafted a new constitution and uh, we uh, placed into the, uh, we have placed um, uh, this uh, new parliamentary system in place, and uh, this is only a parliamentarian country in Central Asia. Yes. So uh, back us, there is uh, Mongolia, uh, in front of us next year, Georgia will turn to parliamentarism, and further up, Mongolia. So you would not find other parliamentarian country. And it's hard today. It's hard for us uh, to work uh, still. It is uh, it is difficult system, and it is very difficult to live in democracy. So uh, this is responding to your question. Uh, those are uh, the events which we uh, live uh, live through. And so what we have promised, we have implemented. So we have conducted parliamentary elections, we have conducted presidential elections, and we've done in time. And of course, when people now compare events in uh, uh, Arab countries, in the Middle East countries, and uh, uh, Kyrgyz events, uh, certainly we have succeeded. We have succeeded to go through all these events, and so we've done ever first uh, transparent, open, fair elections, which have been uh, recognized by the observatory missions from the European Union, OSCE, PASSE, and so we are very proud of, of this. Uh, and uh, let, let me ask you, uh, you were, and I believe still are, very popular in Kyrgyzstan. You have a very high approval rating among the people of the Kyrgyz Republic. Why did you decide to step down as president and not to campaign for another term as president? That was uh, uh, the, uh, the decision which we took uh, um, from the beginning that uh, we need a, uh, such a transitional time. And someone should be ready to go through this transitional time. Yeah. Took a very hard decision, in other words, uh, I would say. And uh, I, I, I suppose to take uh, these decisions when uh, um, we left uh, to go to Bakif to leave the country, when I uh, took the decision to uh, uh, make an inquiry, international inquiry on the events in the South. This is the first ever international inquiry which done in the territory of the former Soviet Union. And uh, that was uh, crucial, important for and us. The international inquiry into the uh, conflict that happened the in the conflict. South between different ethnic groups. Between Uzbeks and Kyrgyz. Yeah. Um, so, so you decided not to campaign as president again because you felt it was important that someone play a role in the transition and then leave it was to emphasize the democratic nature of the transition. Exactly. It was designed from the beginning that uh, uh, if a transition will take place, and then uh, this person will not uh, go for the 
election again. And uh, in our constitution, president uh, uh, can uh, be uh, um, just uh, in one term to work on one term and not to go for another term. So six years term we have for the president. Well, so far, and I stress, of course, so far we've seen a happy twist to the story. As Undersecretary Sherman was pointing out, uh, Kyrgyzstan's last presidential election was quite successful, free and fair, according to the judgment of the, uh, of the observers. Um, what does Kyrgyzstan have to do in the next few years to ensure that democracy remains strong? Uh, I started to tell you that parliamentarism is unusual system. Right. It is unusual system of governance in our part of the world. We used to live uh, all the time under authoritarian uh, system, Tsar, Khan, that sort of uh, leaders, let's say. And um, uh, people uh, find uh, parliamentary system uh, chaotic, messy, and uh, for this uh, coalition changes and then minister changes. And uh, uh, I was uh, uh, talking recently to an uh, ambassador of Poland and uh, I found that in the 90s they had a every year change of the government. Now it takes five years. So, I mean, uh, you fix the system, you find uh, such a solution uh, that uh, this uh, changes uh, will last uh, longer and uh, uh, we, we are exercising this for the first time on the level of the country. Just recently uh, uh, elections uh, in local governments uh, accomplished and uh, that was elections on the uh, pro proportional base. So we are doing for the first time everything now. And uh, I do believe that uh, we should uh, succeed. Nobody wants our success, by the way, so uh, for, uh, around. Uh, they want uh, to see that uh, parliamentarism, not for this area, it's better other system, but we want to succeed. And so we will do our best uh, to succeed. And uh, uh, certainly, it is painful route. It is not easy. It is. Uh, uh, just um, mm, uh, people who used to live under, authority, uh, under 70 years who've been in the Soviet, uh, uh, for under Soviet governance or rule and uh, everything, command instruction will come from above and it's easier that uh, you would uh, implement what uh, you've told to do, right? Now uh, you should uh, uh, listen to the critic uh, and critic comes from all sides and uh, uh, you should uh, do better than others, and, and so on. I mean, this is very competent environment where you act. And uh, sometimes, of course, uh, in uh, such uh, early ages, uh, probably easy to take one decision and economy will go smoothly forward. Uh, but we have in 20 years other quality of uh, people and nation. Uh, people uh, who live in the open environment with a free press, acting themselves, involving in the activity. They don't wait that the uh, state will uh, fit you. They work themselves. In my country, women play a very active role. And uh, uh, we have 5,000 NGOs. Most of them are led by women. A lot of journalists, women, and I must tell you that uh, in my uh, when I was uh, president, I put forward uh, the candidatures of prosecutor general as women, um, chairwoman of national court, uh, uh, president of uh, national bank, and all of them they've been approved by uh, parliament, and they are still uh, in job. They are working. Uh, recently, President uh, has uh, uh, appointed um, uh, the uh, accounting uh, of, um, chamber, we audit, say, right? Yes, the audit yeah. chamber. Audit chamber. So uh, uh, she's women also. Mm. We have Minister of Finance women. We have Deputy Prime Minister, Minister of Health women. So, I mean, we You're have doing better than the United States on that front. <laughs> Probably. We have 23% women in the parliament by quarter, we need the women. Uh, so 
this is, I think, uh, something special about my country. Well, I, of course, wanted to ask you about this. What, is this. what has it been like for you as a woman politician? And as you say, your country has some very interesting traditions of powerful, strong women. Tell us a little bit about how that has worked to your advantage or worked to your disadvantage as a, as a politician. I would be not humble, but uh, for I think uh, in this uh, crisis time, uh, uh, for all of us women been uh, very uh, uh, in the right time, on the right place. Uh, resilience was uh, the main, our uh, characteristic, because it was hard time, difficult time. Really, we paid high price. We lost people's life. A lot of people uh, been dead. Uh, I was uh, uh, facing with the pain and tragedy of many people uh, going to Osh, uh, for meeting those uh, people uh, in pain in Bishkek, in our capital city. Uh, a lot of people suffered. And uh, uh, meanwhile, uh, for this uh, Bakiev's clan, they want to come back again to the power. And uh, they shaken up the situation all the time so and to, to put together everything and to go through this uh, difficult time in one and a half years i ha i have conducted three elections uh, referendum uh, where we have uh, passed this new constitution parliamentary elections presidential elections so i supposed to mobilize the whole nation for those elections otherwise uh, people just uh, will not go for elections and they will tell, look, we are full of blood and pain, why we should go for these elections? But people have been uh, really united in front of these uh, uh, challenges and uh, uh, it's happened so that we overco uh, overcome all these uh, problems and troubles and I do believe because of uh, mobilization of women, mothers, girls, uh, and uh, we strived for the new life, for new horizons, and uh, that is, uh, seems to me, a heart of the success also. Uh, as Under Secretary of State Sherman mentioned, um, among your other present activities, you're promoting uh, women as entrepreneurs, uh, as business people, um, and, a, and a number of other realms. Um, tell us a little bit about your present, about your foundation and your various initiatives. Tell us a little bit about what you're doing now. Thank you for this question. Really, I'm uh, uh, building now my ex-presidency of, um, uh, no, it is not my institution, it is state institution. We do not have in our part of the world uh, such a status of ex, uh, and, yes. uh, <laughs> and, and, and especially in my country where uh, two presidents run away and, uh, uh, nice. um, and it is also very important because uh, usually when bureaucrats leave the position, they are uh, either uh, sort of uh, in jail or uh, they, are, uh, they are under uh, investigation or in search or something like that. And uh, now uh, leaving the position and being among the people, going to the people, this is something unusual. And uh, people, of course, appreciate it uh, very much. Uh, this is something what I do believe uh, building the trust uh, among the people to the power, uh, to the authorities also. I uh, found uh, uh, my foundation. Uh, foundation is uh, one year old uh, now. I, uh, we've done straight uh, um, uh, number of projects. Among them, this project which was initiated uh, uh, by the way, by uh, for Secretary of State uh, Mrs. Clinton. She came to Kyrgyzstan uh, once and uh, she has initiated this conference and it is a Central Asia now initiative uh, and uh, um, in uh, Uzbekistan and Kazakhstan, they used to have uh, quite a good experience association of business women. We didn't have before, so we established now and uh, we are working all of us together, building capacity of women entrepreneurs. On the uh, lower level, we have microcredit movement in Central Asia. Uh, the strongest is in my country because we started in 94, 95. 
um, and mm. it's quite developed, very uh, such a strong uh, um, movement. And then middle uh, for uh, such a level, and this is exactly business women entrepreneurs, and uh, this is a very important movement, and I do hope that uh, uh, this will grow up and will have uh, a big business uh, leaders also one day. So. Uh, uh, my job and uh, for, uh, this uh, crowd of women's uh, um, goal is uh, to build capacity of business women entrepreneurs in Central Asia. We want to include Afghani women also, and uh, I'm now in the United States uh, looking for this, uh, uh, for that type of projects, and uh, I think um, this is important. Uh, uh, this year, probably I'm on, on the fifth or sixth uh, talks about the w role of women. I'm going now to Little Rock, uh, uh, where we'll have a Madrid Club annual meeting. Oh. And two days we'll talk about women also. Sounds like uh, the world uh, looks uh, the last refuge in women. Apparently so. <laughs> Apparently so. Um, if I may, uh, mm -hmm. I'd like to ask you about a somewhat uh, more painful question, as you said, very painful issue of the ethnic tensions in Kyrgyzstan. What do you think is the best way forward? Um, uh, as you mentioned in 2010, there was uh, a certain amount of conflict, uh, which has left some, some lasting scars in the society of the Kyrgyz Republic. What's the best way to go forward and mend those wounds? To bridge people, to bridge people, to make a lot of projects, uh, bringing together women to women, young people to young people, elderly to elderly, so to make sure, uh, to, to change the environment, uh, to take a political leadership also, uh, to, uh, mm, to tell that we are one nation. Unfortunately, in this uh, first 20 years, uh, um, we, uh, each of us in the former Soviet Union exercised uh, such a, mood that uh, we should go to our authenticity, uh, to our, uh, for we should find uh, uh, where we are, uh, came from, and so on. And uh, a lot of such a mood was prevailed uh, if, uh, everywhere. But we should realize that we are multi-ethnic societies. And in my country, we have inherited from the Soviet days, 70 ethnic groups uh, live in my of a small uh, country. Uh, so uh, now, uh, after uh, what's happened, tragic events in Osh, they have been repeated in 20 years. Uh, and uh, for people still live uh, with pain and tragedy. And uh, uh, they, they re repair the houses, uh, housing. It is easy. It, it, it is possible to do. If you have this investment, it is possible. But repair the souls and social fabric. This is the most difficult. And uh, uh, we face a lot of social economical problems in Fergana Valley and uh, uh, scarce of water, land, uh, uh, means uh, for economical uh, life. So <coughs> this is, of course, uh, people face every day. But uh, uh, study together, learn together, work together, that sort of projects which we are working on. And I was uh, in the United Nations the other day and uh, met with the people from Peace Bal uh, Building Fund of the United Nations. And uh, we get uh, from tranche from the United Nations and uh, we'll continue to work on that. So this is uh, probably on the solution. Um, I think I have time for one more question, and then I'd like to open it up to the floor because I can tell that people have a lot of questions of their own. But um, one thing that's always fascinated me about the, the position of Kyrgyzstan is that it's a small country with a very distinct identity surrounded by very big neighbors. And as you alluded, these neighbors don't necessarily share the political principles that you're describing to us so impressively here. Um, how do you square that circle? How do you live comfortably with these big neighbors who aren't necessarily of the same mind about what kind of political system to have? We live silently. <laughs> 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 we, 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 
supposed to live like that, and uh, there is uh, no choice. And uh, uh, we have such a big neighbor like China, and uh, China is uh, uh, China is very politically correct. Uh, doesn't uh, enter to our internal matters, and uh, we are together in the Shanghai Cooperation Organization, and. Uh, of um, big t trade uh, goes uh, forth and back, and uh, this is uh, very important. Kazakhstan is a very quickly modernized country, and uh, we have uh, quite a good relations. Uh, um, uh, unfortunately, not very much trade is with Uzbekistan these days, uh, but it's uh, our big neighbor, <coughs> and uh, we, uh, we are so close uh, uh, in many ways. Uh, uh, tradition, uh, historically, and uh, we, uh, we do believe that uh, one day these uh, avenues will be open, uh, Tajikistan. So, I mean, uh, we, uh, politically, we are uh, all right these days. Uh, we want to succeed. We want uh, to put uh, in place uh, parliamentarism. We know that our neighbors also, they are learning a lot from our experience. Uh, they, uh, they're also developing their democracy and uh, uh, we do feel that uh, our success uh, will be uh, very valuable for them. I suspect it will be as well. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much for chatting with me. I really thank you for the opportunity thank you. again.